Over 15 years ago, the people of Washington made a commitment to bring back our salmon. Hundreds of organizations have been working together to recover numerous rivers in our state. We've seen success in our restoration efforts, yet some of Washington's salmon populations are not recovering. Uh, I believe the Salmon Recovery Funding Board uh, felt an obligation to demonstrate that the actions that are being taken were the most cost effective and that were making a difference. And so they wanted to have a monitoring program that would actually prove that. With a focus on our salmon populations, there are a lot of questions to be answered. In a general sense, we want to know if the numbers are increasing or if they're decreasing or if they're staying the same. Um, at a deeper level, we'd like to know something about the bottlenecks to their survival and understanding the reasons for those bottlenecks. The three basic ways that we use to ensure that our salmon recovery efforts are working are what we call fish-in, fish-out monitoring, project effectiveness monitoring, and intensively monitored watersheds. All three of these monitoring efforts allow us to collect the data we need and determine the state of our salmon. Fish-in, fish-out data is where we count how many adults enter freshwater to spawn, estimating the total number of juvenile salmon that are heading downstream towards the ocean as they leave freshwater. By measuring these important transitions as adults enter freshwater, and then as the juveniles or young salmon leave freshwater, we're able to know the extent to which freshwater and the marine environment are affecting overall population abundance. This is just really critical information to, to make decisions of all sorts when it comes to salmon ma management and conservation. On the Dungeness River, we have a really great collaboration with the Jamestown Skull Island Tribe where we operate a screw trap in the main stem Dungeness River down near the mouth. And then the Jamestown Skull Island Tribe operates a fence rear on Matriotti Creek. They capture steelhead in that trap, they mark them, and the proportion of the marked fish that they release that we catch down at our trap in the lower river, we use to estimate the trap efficiency and expand our raw steelhead catch into an abundance estimate. Some of the most important information that we've gathered through effectiveness monitoring is which projects are working, are the fish utilizing the projects that we're building, and is the habitat changing in the ways that we hope for, as well as which project types are more effective. For example, we put large wood into streams as a restoration technique, and we found that a lot of different types of fish use that wood. For example, steelhead and coho extensively use large wooded streams. We've also found that Chinook maybe use floodplain channels a little bit more extensively. So when we're targeting a specific species, we can pick the different types of projects that are best tuned to those species needs. Project effectiveness monitoring involves monitoring the habitat uh, responses from projects that we've implemented and also fish use of those projects. Intensively monitored watershed or IMW program we're able to met, look at the fish responses to those watersheds that have received the restoration and compare them to watersheds where there has been no restoration actions taken. Fish populations are notoriously variable and it's difficult to isolate the factors that are contributing to that variability and especially when we come to habitat restoration. The IMW program involves life cycle monitoring of coho, chinook, uh, steelhead, and then it couples that with annual habitat assessments as well as water quality monitoring, stream temperature, stream flows, and other information that helps us to interpret the fish responses. In the Lower Columbia uh, watershed that is incorporated in the IMW program, we learned pretty early on that the winter survival for coho salmon, for juvenile coho salmon, could be quite variable. And because of this, the habitat restoration is targeting overwintering habitat in these populations in the hopes of improving their survival and then improving their returns to the river. It's important to make sure we're taking the right actions to track how well our restoration efforts are working and to make wise decisions about how we care for our salmon. We're just now, after 10 years, starting to get some answers. And if we were to stop now, we would shut off the fruits of all the, the uh, monitoring that has occurred over the last 10 years.